The CSRA Film Unit was established in 1948. The purpose of the unit was to produce scientific research, record and educational type films dealing with the work of the organisation in the many divisions and sections throughout CSRO in Australia. We haven't before made any record of how we make our films or our facilities, but we took the occasion of a visit from Mr Mirage Ali from the Marine Fisheries Research Station in Pakistan to make for him a short record of the facilities and equipment we use in our work and in this film you'll see Mirage observing the various officers of the film unit at their job. I was granted an award for study in Australia under the Colombo plan, one of several schemes of international cooperation that are helping many nations to speed up their pace of development. Here, from the top of the ICI building, I am looking out across the sprawling city of Melbourne. Melbourne is the capital city of Victoria, the smallest state on the Australian mainland. Melbourne was my home base in Australia and most of my time was spent here. It is a modern industrial city with a population of more than two million. It is the second largest city in Australia and for the first quarter of the century was the site of the federal parliament. Melbourne is well known for its tree-lined streets and modern new buildings. I found that Australians were friendly, informal people, people with a strong feeling that each man deserves a fair go. With this friendly attitude, the Australian people are showing their knowledge and technical skills through the Colombo plan, and so they are helping to raise the standard of living amongst their neighbours in Southeast Asia. During the summer months, the people of Melbourne find much of their relaxation out of doors in the sun, on the beaches and in the rivers. I also have a pretty girl, she not with me today. They all the same, the pretty girl, make them the nest, then they fly away. Yellow bird up high in banana tree Yellow bird, you sit all alone like me Better fly away in the sky away Make her coming soon Melbourne is regarded by many as the cultural centre of Australia and is noted for its fine concerts. During the summer, these are held outdoors in the music bowl, the giant sound shell, set among the trees near the river bank. Once each year, Melbourne celebrates in a big festival called Moomba. Here there are parades and floats through the city streets as the people get together to have fun.
so now we have seen something of the people and the places I visited in Melbourne as a background to my training program. My central point of attachment was to the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization, whose headquarters are in these buildings in Melbourne. Here in the CSIRO Film Unit, I was stationed for much of my time in Australia. And here I learned the techniques of scientific filmmaking that will be of great benefit to me in producing rural programs for the fishing community in my country. One of the first things I did was to talk to Mr. Evans, the officer in charge of the film unit, and Mr. Ned Wallish, one of CSIRO's officers for international cooperation. Good afternoon, Captain. Mr. of the Department of External Affairs. And it seems that, uh, well, nearly the majority of them can be covered by CSIRO, mm -hmm. not only in the film unit here, but uh, with the uh, fisheries and uh, oceanography in Sydney, where you have a fairly lengthy attachment. Uh, you will be required to go outside CSIRO for some of the attachments. Uh, we were thinking of uh, an advertising people, Clemenges perhaps, uh, fisheries and wildlife in Melbourne, uh, and perhaps some of the television stations. Mm. Uh, I think seeing the longest uh, period of attachment will be with the film unit. Mr Evans might like to uh, say something about how you should begin. Well, I think that the first thing, Mirage, for you to do would be to have a talk with Mr. David Cork. I think that if you'd make him your sort of first reference here, uh, David will uh, give you a general outline of our work and then other people like Mr. Tony Evans on script writing, Mr. Peter Bruce on sound recording, Ms. Alice O'Donnell on editing, and Mr. Perce Watson on animation. They'll be the people you'll be mainly concerned with. Perhaps We're very pleased to have you here. Perhaps we could shoot a few shots for, uh, to take back, you know, if this might be quite an idea, if you could go around the film unit and see some of the equipment and take a few shots and make them a little film or something like that, with yeah. Alice and uh, yeah. Pete on the camera, or sound but recording this sort of thing. Quite a good idea, yes. The difficulty is going to be to make a film of any uh, length or anything like that. Oh, yes. It yeah. will, of necessity, not be very profound. No, I can yeah. see it could be in the yeah. time. Films are usually considered the most effective communication tool in education. For the research scientist, the film unit acts as an interpreter so that his work and his findings are made known to the people who can make use of them. Here I am being shown a film on tagging of the Australian salmon, Aripistrata. This tagging program is helping the scientists of the Division of Fisheries and Oceanography to learn more about the movement and distribution of the species. This film is aimed at encouraging commercial and amateur fishermen, canners and processors to return the tags from salmon catches. The script writer in the film unit has many special problems in preparing a good film script. He bears in mind that no longer is the film confined to the fireproof projection box in the commercial cinema, but it has broken out into homes, schools, factories, hospitals and scientific institutions. It is also transmitted by television 
to reach many thousands of people at the same time. Although much of the script writing is technical, imagination still remains the most important ingredient in almost any kind of script to make it an original masterpiece. One day, during a break in the filming at the studio, the scriptwriter talked to me about his special problems, emphasizing how a good script and a good film can be a powerful instrument in teaching. Film opens a window on the world for scientists, biologists, doctors, mechanics, soldiers and astronauts. Film can record the movement of countless instruments in a space rocket and bring back to Earth pictures of the world beneath for study by waiting scientists. The script writing for educational films is not merely telling a story or presenting an idea in a filmic form. It is also the creation of a plan of action whereby a team of men, a director and his technicians, can bring a subject effectively to the screen. We also talked about the problems of filmmaking in Pakistan, one of five big filmmaking countries of the world. While I was with the film unit, they were setting up a new studio for the production of television films in agricultural subjects. This series is aimed at the farmer and will help him to understand some of the research workers' aims and problems. The film unit is well set up with 16 mm equipment. A reflex cameras with sound blimps are used mainly in the studio as they require the use of 240 volt power to drive the synchronous motors for sound recording work. The Eclair camera is more portable silent camera used for sound recording work outside the studio. It is a self-blimped camera with quickly interchangeable magazines. This is not quite as quiet as the studio camera, but uh, as it is more portable, it is easier to use on locations. It is operated by a 12-volt battery and has an electronically governed motor which provides a synchronizing pulse for the tape recorder. The Nagra tape recorder which is used both in the studio and outside is matched to all the cameras and is equipped with the sync pulse recording head. In this film unit, operating the camera and the sound recorder are done by all members. Each filmmaker takes on a project and he may have to write some of the script, operate the camera, direct the action and finally edit both the picture and sound. Most of the films which the CSIRO film unit make have sections of animation in them to explain the more difficult aspects of research work and to show those things that cannot be seen or photographed in the conventional way. All artwork and animation is of course very time consuming and with a single frame camera it sometimes takes weeks to prepare and photograph something that appears for only a few seconds on the screen. 
The services of the film unit's animation department are in constant demand by the filmmakers of the unit. Here, the artist is being asked about some point of animation in a new film. The artists are always kept advised of any changes in the script and they are consulted at all stages during the preparation of the artwork. This work requires a great deal of care and patience. All of it must be carefully planned to the last frame. The film unit has motorized editing machines like this one and they are all nearly always in use because editing takes up a large proportion of the time spent on making any film. The work print is cut to match the script and the soundtrack is also edited to synchronize with the picture. Here I am watching the editing of a film on CSIRO's new radio telescope. The black and white work print is being matched to the magnetic sound track. The final film will be in color and tells the story of the research work going on with this giant instrument as well as giving some details of its construction. After editing comes the final sound recording and mixing stages. Here the narration, sound effects and music tracks are run together and mixed onto a single roll of magnetic film. The sound mixer controls the volume of each track and makes the adjustments at the right moment as he watches the film. Almost the last stage in film production is the matching of the black and white work print to the originals in color. The work print 
and each roll of the original printing film is wound through a synchronizer to keep the picture matched after each splice. Each splice must be well made as it will have to stand up to many years of service. One very interesting aspect of scientific filmmaking is cinematography and the film unit is well equipped for this work. The movie camera is mounted on a very rigid stand above a high quality research microscope. Here I am being shown the equipment by Mr. Evans, the film unit chief, before it is set up for a job. An electronic interval timer switches on the microscope light first, then the camera, and can make exposures over a wide range of intervals. With this equipment, the film unit has produced some excellent results in recent years. On a number of occasions, I went out with uh, cameraman director to film shots in laboratories and in the fields. Here I am watching the filming of an experimental high-speed wool dyeing process which has been developed by CSIRO. Copies of the films which the CSIRO film unit makes are sent all over the world to scientific and government institutions. After the new prints have been checked, they are rewound before being sent to their destination. Some of the films produced here have won high praise in local and overseas film festivals. All of the creative work which goes on in a film unit like this one also depends on the hard work of those who check the new prints and type the scripts. So now, with many things seen and experienced, I sit thinking of the time spent in Australia under the Colombo plan and the valuable training it has given me in the production of educational and scientific films. Now, I am looking forward to going back to my country, Pakistan. But I will take with me a lasting impression of the friendship of CSIRO and its film unit and the hospitality of the people of Australia.